Okay, we're going to have a look at module number five right now, which is the next module that you're going to be working on in the Introduction to Drafting class. Um, module number five covers auxiliary views. Um, auxiliary views are a form of orthographic view. They're intended to show uh, inclined or oblique surfaces in their true shape and size, or we could also say features on inclined and oblique surfaces in their true shape and size. Uh, so we're going to look at a short presentation um, just to show you some examples and some of the uh, details or guidelines associated with auxiliary views. And then we'll look at a couple of examples and then we'll finish up with um, a look at the homework assignments that you're going to be working on for this assignment. Okay. So first of all, as I said, auxiliary views are, are used to show inclined and oblique surfaces in their true shape and size. Um, Inclined and oblique surfaces are surfaces that uh, are not going to be true shape and size in a standard view that is a top, front, right side, left side, bottom, or back view. So we do have issues with those uh, surfaces or features on those surfaces. Um, and that's really the reason why we need an auxiliary view to show those surfaces clearly and plainly and allow us to dimension them without any confusion. Um, as I also said, auxiliary views are still orthographic views, so they have to conform to the alignment rules for orthographic views um, and all the other rules for orthographic views. Um, they are uh, obviously different than the top, front, right side, left side, bottom, and rear views. These are um, kind of outside of that range. Um, and there are some uh, shortcuts that we can use. Uh, when we're drawing auxiliary views to help simplify the view, to help, uh, to help us to understand what we're showing, because um, auxiliary views can tend to be rather confusing to, to look at, to, I, to digest, to understand. Um, and we'll be talking about some of those uh, tricks, and you'll actually be using some of those shortcuts in your assignments. Uh, primary auxiliary views are views that are project our auxiliary views that are projected onto a plane that is perpendicular to one of the principal planes of projection. Okay, now that's a that's a terribly complicated uh, definition. Basically, um, an auxiliary view that shows an inclined surface in its true shape and size view is a pr primary auxiliary view. So, inclined surfaces are used for primary auxiliary views. Uh, on the other hand, secondary auxiliary views are projected from primary auxiliary views and are used to show oblique surfaces in their true shape and size view. So the only thing you really need to remember is primary views are used to show inclined surfaces in their true shape and size uh, representation, and secondary auxiliary views are used to show oblique surfaces in their true shape and size representation. Uh, the, the good news I can tell you here is that in none of the uh, drawings in this assignment are going to be uh, secondary auxiliary views. Those are very difficult, um, even difficult to kind of comprehend and to understand. So we're not going to be doing those. Those are, you know, kind of beyond the scope of what we're looking at here. So all of our work is going to be inclined and primary auxiliary views. So an, an explanation or a graphical way to represent inclined surfaces is shown in this slide. Um, and we're using the glass, the glass box analogy, okay? So the object in question is blue object. And you can see the surface labeled P is an inclined surface, okay? So in the front view, the inclined surface is going to appear as an edge. This isn't anything out of the out of the ordinary because notice this surface over here is also an edge. Notice the top surface here is also showing as an edge. So the inclined surface P shows us an edge here, but where it gets interesting is when we look at the top view. Okay, so now the top view, you can see the inclined surface, again, mark P, the inclined surface right here is not in its true shape and size uh, representation. You can clearly see that the surface represented here is not the size of the surface mark P, okay? So 
This is the reason why we want to use an auxiliary view to show surface P in its true shape and size orientation. Now, how we do that is we basically orient a folding line or what we call projection plane that is parallel to the inclined surface. Okay. So in normal cases, when we're showing, let's say, a top view, we're going to orient the projection plane. And, and a lot of times this projection plane is, is imaginary or, you know, it's a construction line or whatever, but we're going to orient this parallel to the edge view of that plane, which is right there. So this folding line or projection plane is parallel to this edge view of the surface. And thus, when we project through here, we get the true shape and size representation of the top of this box. Notice that this inclined surface, P, is not parallel to the projection plane here. That means that when we project this plane or this surface through the projection plane and draw it up in the top view, it is not true shape and size. In order to get this plane, true shape and size, we have to do the same thing we did for this top surface. We have to orient a projection plane that is parallel to the surface in question, which this projection plane is parallel to this inclined surface, the surface in question, and we project through, we get a true shape and size representation of that surface. Now, notice though that this surface now is not parallel to the projection plane, nor is this surface parallel to the projection plane. So these surfaces down at the front here and at the top are no longer true shape and size, okay? By the way, that was an auxiliary view, a primary auxiliary view, right? Because we're just projecting an inclined surface. So that's a primary auxiliary view. All right. Um, so, so here's another way to look at the, the, the central problem. And, and here we have an object. This is actually very similar to one of your assignments in class. Um, but we have an object, the top view you can see here. And you can see that the orientation of this top feature is kind of at an angle. And so that means that this front face and this back face are, are what we would call inclined surfaces. And so when we represent those surfaces and those features in the front view and in the right side view, we get this foreshortened or truncated or, um, you know, not true shape and size view, which results in the circular features appearing elliptical. Same thing in the right side view. In order to fix that, we have to project, we have to create a primary auxiliary view, which is projection, which is projected through a imaginary projection plane that is that is parallel to this surface. And when we, when we project through, we get circular features and nothing that's foreshortened. All right, here's a little explanation of the foreshortening, right? So here's that projection plane. When we, when we project down, when we project through this inclined feature, this hole is at, um, at an angle rep, uh, relative to the projection plane. When we project down these blue dotted lines, dashed lines are the projectors, we get a elliptical shape like that. You will be drawing some of these elliptical features in your uh, drawings. All right, one of the common ways that we alleviate some of the confusion with auxiliary views is that we draw partial auxiliary views. And basically a partial auxiliary view is an auxiliary view that only focuses on the area in question, that is to say the the surface that we want to show in its true shape and size representation, and we omit we literally do not draw the rest of the object because it would be confusing. So um, let's look at view A. So in view A, we have a feature here. Here's the inclined surface and here's the features on that inclined surface. 
So we project it through. This is our primary auxiliary view. But notice this feature right here would appear foreshortened right in, in this auxiliary view. So we literally use a break line, right, which is just a jagged visible line. And we don't draw anything below that. Now, by the way, we can also use partial views for regular orthographic views, right? They're not only used for auxiliary views. So, um, so the partial top view, we, we have this feature, which is not true, not foreshortened, which is shown true shape and size. But then all these other features, because they're at an angle relative to the top view, they're going to be foreshortened. So you know what? We just break it off right there and only show that part. Same thing for the partial right side view. Okay. Now, this partial auxiliary view is developed from this surface right there. And you can see we have a break there and we have a break there in the partial front view. And then likewise over here. Now, I encourage you to look back at this um, presentation and also to look in uh, the auxiliary view chapter in your textbook for more examples so that you can start to understand what this means and how to represent it. Um, your assignments will use partial auxiliary views and actually partial regular views um, to help uh, avoid some of the complexity that's unnecessary uh, when you're showing uh, auxiliary views. Uh, just another example of a partial auxiliary view. This is a partial auxiliary view where we're using a center line to break the object to show the part that we want to show with the, and avoid the part that we don't want to show back here. So we, so in, in the, in the previous drawing, what we use is a break line, which is just a visible line drawn kind of randomly and jagged like that. Okay. Um, in this, we're, instead of a break line, we're using a center line. And so in the bottom view also, again, this is just a regular orthographic view, but we can still use a partial view for that. Right. And the reason why we can do this, obviously, is because this object is completely symmetrical. So there's nothing to be gained from showing the omitted side here. Right. Because it's the same as this. And um, finally, my last example, this is kind of getting a little bit beyond our chapter, uh, but I felt compelled to throw it in there. Um, We'll be looking at section views next in the next module, but uh, we can also use auxiliary or create auxiliary section views, right? And so here we have a cutting plane line that is traveling at an angle. In fact, it's perpendicular to the uh, feature here. And so when we project through, we get an auxiliary section view here, okay? Now, uh, let me go a little bit further in our discussion of, um, of auxiliary views, and uh, we'll look at AutoCAD. Now, this is not going to be an AutoCAD demo. demo. Uh, I've already done that, and, and you can look at that video for the whole construction. Uh, I, I will be adding to that also, adding another video, but this one is just the drawing that I've done in AutoCAD to show you some of the nuances and details associated with auxiliary view. Okay, so let's take this object as an example, okay? So here we have kind of a simple block, right? It's a block with, whoops, I have an error in that. Let me, let me fix that right now. You can ignore this bit, but I just found an error, and I do not want to show you a drawing with an error in it. Okay, so now we'll go back to where we were. You can ignore all that. And I will turn back the regular features on this. All right, so let's go back where we were. All right, so here's our object. It's kind of a simple block, right? It's a block with maybe two uh, runners on, the, on either side, and we have a hole in the center of it, all right? So this is an isometric representation, that's not important. I'm just trying to show you the 3D view of this. So how would we draw this uh, orthographically? We wanna create a top front and a right side view, okay? So let's first create the front view, all right? 
And this is what our front view would look like right there. Okay. Um, I think everybody hopefully would agree that that would be the front view, right? You can see the incline surface on the back. You can see the larger incline surface on the front. And you can see the edges for the two uh, ledges here or feet or whatever you want to call them. Okay. So there's our front view. All right. No problem. Right. Nothing is foreshortened here. Everything is true shape and size. Now let's draw the top view. OK, now I've already drawn the top view. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it or actually move it down in the view. And there's our top view. OK, now right away you can see a problem. OK, um, we have in this object two inclined surfaces right here and right here. These are our inclined surfaces. OK, um, in this top view. This incline surface is clearly shown smaller than it actually is. And you can see the hole that is on this surface. And let me pull this in here. There you go. The hole that is on this surface is now represented as an ellipse. Likewise, this surface is also foreshortened or not true shape and size. Okay. And so the problem is that uh, we have a feature here that is not being shown in its actual shape and size. That is, we have a hole that's circular and we're showing it as, as an ellipse. Now, that's a problem when we're dimensioning it. That's a problem when we're trying to just understand what the object is. Now, if I go ahead and pull in the, the right side view, you can see the problem doesn't change. So here's our three view drawing, front, top, and right side view. And we have an elliptical representation for this hole, right? And so how do we change that elliptical representation? Well, basically we're going to uh, create an auxiliary view of this surface right there, of this surface and this surface right here where it's shown right there, okay? Um, so let me bring that in. I've already created that surface. So I'll go and make that visible. All right, and there we go. Now I'm going to move this aside a little bit. I think I got that a little bit too close. Okay. So there is, whoops, and I'm missing some of that. There is the representation of the object right there, okay? Um, now that's the full object. If I was just going to show the, the features that um, are uh, just this square surface with the hole, let me make, let me, let me fix that then. We'll go to auxiliary visible and show that okay so that is a partial auxiliary view of this surface this incline surface just by itself with the hole okay now as i showed you before when we add in all the other bits i i would argue that this is easy to understand right it's a square with a hole in it right when we add in the other bits to show the full view, the full object, now it gets a little bit more complicated, a little bit more confusing because we have this surface here, which is shown right here, and that's foreshortened. And we have this surface here, which is shown right here, and that is also foreshortened. And we also have the two ledges right here, on either side, and they're also shown foreshortened, right? And so that's why we really generally stay with stay with the partial uh, auxiliary views, unless there is some compelling reason why we need to show everything else.
Okay, so now we're going to uh, look at the hidden lines that we would have in this uh, in this drawing. Um, and that's really going to hopefully drive home the point that partial views are, are good in auxiliary views and um, showing all the features can detract a lot of times from our understanding of the object. Okay, so when I first, uh, let's look at the hidden lines for the front view. Um, so when I open these up, it should be pretty straightforward. All right, so we have a hole and we have the two sides of the hole going through. All right, that's, that's pretty easy to understand what's going on. All right, I'm omitting the center line just to keep things clear. But now let's look at the, uh, the hidden lines for the side view. And before I turn those on, I would direct you to the fact that see how the hole is going to come out of the back surface a little high and it's going to come through the bottom surface right about here. That's what's going to create our problems. That's what's going to be the source of our problems. So when I uh, turn on the side hidden lines here, this is what we get. Okay. Now, uh, if I zoom in here, this hidden line right there is simply due to this back edge right there. All right. But here we have the side of the hole. But where the hole comes out of this back surface, we have to show that as an ellipse. Okay. So now it's not so clear what's going on. If we looked at this and tried to create this object back again, you know, in other words, if we kind of looked at this, the, these three views and tried to figure out that this is the object that we're looking at, it's definitely not going to be um, uh, an easy task. All right. And it definitely gets worse when we look at the top view hidden lines because we have kind of almost a full ellipse right there. Okay. So it's shortened is truncated right on this back surface let me pull out a little bit all right so this is a this is a good reason why uh, we use partial view so in reality what would this object look like if we were to create an engineering drawing of this I would uh, I, I would say that we would not show the side or the top hidden lines so we would create a partial top view and a partial front view, oh, excuse me, and a partial side view. We would show this, the full front view, right? Because that's important for showing how deep the hole goes, right? And there's nothing confusing about that hole there. And we would show this auxiliary view. And again, we would show a partial auxiliary view. So, so the correct way to represent this rather simple object would be three partial views, a partial top view, a partial side view, and a partial auxiliary view, and then a full front view. Okay, so let's finish up with um, a, a look at the assignments that you're going to be creating um, or completing in module number five. Um, so module number five is shown here on Canvas. Um, we have the auxiliary view drawing assignments, right? So this is just a explanation of the requirements for each one of the assignments. So you're going to be creating three uh, CAD drawings, a CAD drawing of the angle bracket, a CAD drawing of the shaft support, and a CAD drawing of the connecting bar. Okay, both the shaft support and the connecting bar will have demo videos with them. Okay, uh, and you will also be creating a technical sketch of um, auxiliary, the auxiliary sheet five, AUX five, and there's a demo video of that as well. Okay. So there's four drawings that you're create, that you're completing in this assignment, one sketch, and then three CAD drawings. Okay. So for the CAD drawings, you're going to be using the MVCC templates as you've done before. Uh, you need to pay attention to the CAD department standards. Now I referenced those in the demo videos. So um, you can, you can find, you've probably used that before. I hope you have, um, with your previous assignment, but 
Um, if you need to download it, you can download it right here, okay, CAD Department Standards, and that's going to help you to understand the requirements for, for the uh, auxiliary view drawings. You're going to put the drawings on a the appropriate size uh, border and paper size. Use the template MVCC Mechanical Inch or MVCC Mechanical Metric for uh, all of the drawings. Um, and of course, with the sketch, make sure you use good sketching practice. That is heavy line weights um, and, uh, and, and good technique. Okay. Now, uh, let's look a little bit more about the assignments. So, um, the, the, I, I have demo videos here. This is the sketching demo and this is, um, a auxiliary view CAD drawing demo. Um, this is not an assignment. This is kind of just a demonstration of the, of the, of a auxiliary view technique. I will be adding more videos to that as well. Um, here's the, technical sketching exercise and I'll open up the sketching worksheet AUX-5 and there we go over here okay so there's four drawings or four objects that you're going to sketch the auxiliary view so in the gridded area they're showing you where your auxiliary view is going to be located okay so that's your sketching exercise each one of those, by the way, let me go back here. So I, so I, each one of those, make sure you sketch the partial auxiliary view of the object. Okay. Only the surface in question, only the inclined surface. All of these are all primary auxiliary views, by the way. Um, then we have the angle bracket. Okay. You're doing a front view, a right side view, and a partial auxiliary view. This is found um, on page 164, figure 7-43. Um, then there's the shaft support. And you can see right here, I've already done, I've already completed the shaft support demo video. So you can watch that one to help you. Well, it it's on, if you pull it up here, it comes up on YouTube. Okay, so I don't need to show you all that stuff. Um, and then the, then the shaft support drawing. Again, you're doing a partial auxiliary view, front, top, and a partial auxiliary view. This is going to be potted on B-size layout. And last but not least, probably the more difficult drawing of this whole set is the connecting bar. Okay? You're going to draw a front, a top, and two partial auxiliary views. Two partial auxiliary views. I have yet to complete the demo video of this, but I will complete the demo video uh, this weekend and I will upload it so you can check on that. Okay. Now, probably what's most important other than just the details for the auxiliary review is the fact that um, this is, these drawings are due October 18th. Okay. October 18th. So you have um, basically nine days from today. Okay, so make sure you get started early on those. Don't wait till the last minute. Those of you that have waited till the last minute, you know oftentimes your grade reflects that and you don't have time to finish your object or your drawings. Make sure you get started early. Uh, I will upload the last demo video of the connecting bar so that you can get started on that um, as, as soon as possible. But um, in, in uh, before that, please go ahead, the angle bracket, um, is is the the first one you want to get started on. That's probably the simplest one, and then move on to the shaft support. Last thing I'll say is that conceptually, sometimes it's it can be a little bit difficult to get started with auxiliary views. So my suggestion for your workflow in this is first of all to work on the sketching exercises so that you can get the technique down for creating an auxiliary view, and then take a blank sheet of paper. And when you go to the, when you're ready to start the auxiliary view, the auxiliary bracket drawing, make a sketch of what that auxiliary view is going to look like. All right. Do the same thing with the shaft support and then do the same thing with the connecting bar. Okay. You have demo videos for the shaft support and connecting bar. You will not have a demo video for the angle bracket. I'm going to let you guys figure that out on your own. 
okay? Um, so that's my suggestion on the workflow. If you have any questions, please email me. Good luck on this. Remember, they're due October 18th. This is a two-week assignment. Okay. Have a good, have a good weekend.